Greetings, my name is Kevin Andrew, and today I'm playing Double Dragon 2 for the Nintendo Entertainment System, which, if we're going to be honest, is a pretty fantastic brawler. It came out in 1989 when sort of these kind of games were really the king of video games. It seemed like everybody was making them, uh, these side-scrolling brawlers. And I think Double Dragon was actually one of the games that sort of prompted the, the sort of shift in the video game industry that made people start making these games. Um, the original Double Dragon, I know, was, I think, maybe the first two-player... Well, I think it was the like first brawler, and it was two-player, so you could play cooperatively with a friend, and it was a lot of fun. But uh, I'm just going to jump in. So I'm going to play it on Warrior Difficulty. I'm not going to be able to play through the entire game on Warrior Difficulty. I'll only be able to get to a certain point. Um, but I'm not that good at this game, so I may not even get to that point anyway. So uh, I'm going to play it on Warrior, and... Uh, so the arcade game was actually pretty bare bones, didn't really have much of a story. In the arcade game, uh, your, your girlfriend Marion is just standing out in front of a garage and a couple of guys walk up and a dude shoots her. Shoots her dead. And uh, in this, the NES version of the game, they expanded the story out a little bit and I think they added a couple of levels and I think that was pretty standard for you know a lot of home conversions of games. I think that I've spoken about other games that have done that as well. <clears throat> but um... As they, 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 tell you, they tell you here in the story, Marion was killed. So uh, now I'm going to go out and beat up some people to uh, avenge her death. The Double Dragon swore to avenge her death. So we just go on this mass uh, killing spree where we just go out and we just beat a whole bunch of people to death. Uh, because that's what you want to do. Definitely, that fixes it. So the NES version of the game is quite a bit different from the arcade as far as gameplay is concerned. Um, in the arcade they had, uh, <clears throat> let's see how to explain this. It had an interesting control scheme in the arcade and I'll explain this to you. I don't know if that hand is going to blink continuously and if it does I'll just move forward. But <clears throat> So in the arcade and on the NES, uh, they had the, the the way the buttons are laid out is that um, you have a left attack and you have a right attack. Most brawlers at the time either had a single attack button or they had a kick button and a punch button. The original Double Dragon had a kick button, a kick button, and a punch button, and uh, this game had a left attack and a right attack. So what that is, I'll show you. So A button right here is the right attack. So when I'm pushing the A button, it does attacks on the right side. If I'm facing to the left, he does a sort of back kick. If I'm facing to the right, he does a punch. And the B button is exactly the opposite. It's the left attack. So it's the attack is contextual based on which direction you're facing. It's pretty, pretty self-explanatory, pretty easy to follow. But back, back when this game came out, oh man, <clears throat> there were, it was a lot of confusion. Like I'm, I'm pushing the button to attack. Why am I, why am I not hitting this person? Why am I doing a back kick when the person, uh, when I want to punch this person in the face? That was just sort of the thing. We had to get used to it, just like every other interesting control scheme. And to this date, I don't really know of any brawlers that also use that. I know that uh, I think there was a game called Renegade on the Nintendo uh, that might have used that, or <clears throat> I don't know. It was, it was interesting, and I'm not even sure why they did that, why they made that control scheme, but uh, it translated well to the NES. Now, on the NES, you've only got two buttons. The arcade had three buttons. In the NES, you push the two buttons together, the A and B together, to jump, and then you push a button again to do uh, either a standard jump kick or you do your spin kick. Now, the spin kick is more powerful than the uh, standard jump kick, but you got to get your timing right. You've got to push that button right at the top of your jump. So you also got a couple of other contextual moves that happen based on your timing when you're getting up from uh, ducking. Now there's not a duck button, but anytime you jump, when you land, you duck. See that? So when you're getting up from a, from a duck, if you press the button in the direction you're facing, he'll do this uppercut. See that? There's also another move where he'll do this knee attack. If I can get the timing right. Yeah, there we go. I think that's the most powerful move in the game. If you are able to hit an enemy with that, it sends them flying across the screen and usually kills them. I'll try to get one of these guys with it. Nope, missed it. 
There we go. If you can get the timing down, it's pretty nice. So like these guys, you can uh, knock them off the side, maybe. See if I can knock one of these guys off. Oh, he died really easily. Stop hitting me. I'm just gonna uppercut him. <clears throat> and boss time. Now in the arcade, this level was, was pretty straightforward, very linear. You didn't have to climb to the, the roof of this building. Um, but on this, you do. So <clears throat> we're gonna make our way over to him. And I always thought this was kind of an interesting character. Uh, he picks you up by the hair and punches you in the face. And then after a while, after you've hit him a bunch of times, he will disappear and reappear. So he is magical. Just like that. Let's see if I can get him to grab me by the hair and punch me in the face. Yep. That's just not nice at all, is it? <clears throat> I honestly think he's the most creative character in the game. With the exception of the final boss, which we're unfortunately not going to be able to see because I'm a wuss and playing it on a lower difficulty than the highest difficulty. They're escaping in that choppa. They'll never make it. So we're at the heliport. So I think this is interesting. There are a few levels in the game that are just completely not isometrical. They're totally from the side perspective. And obviously this is one of those levels. <clears throat> This game, at certain intervals, certain levels, has platforming segments, and they're just bad. This game has some of the worst platforming I've ever seen in a video game. Eh, that's probably not true. It's probably worse. But it's not good. <clears throat> no, I usually get hit here by this helicopter. And I did not get hit that time. So what I'm going to do here is do a spin kick to try to knock these guys off of the, uh... Oh, I missed one. Off of the ladder. I did it again. Let's see if I can get this timed right. There we go! Make easy work of those guys. <clears throat> yeah, lots of different timing-based moves. In fact, there's one when the enemies are getting up that you can sort of knee, I guess, knee them when they're getting up. If you can land the attack. I don't know why I'm not hitting him now, is it? I guess that's too far away. So the boss of this level is actually two guys, and they are really easy right here. But you have to fight them again at the last level, and they're significantly more challenging when you fight them in the last level. Here, you literally just spin kick them twice. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. Oh man, I said that about them being easy and they're mad now. I missed my, uh, my spin kick. Where's the other guy? Oh, I guess I killed him. Come back! Come back! This next level is kind of interesting. Uh, hold it! You'll never escape from us! Grasp! So this level is one room. You're on this helicopter, and there's a door on the top right of the screen, and if the door opens, you get sucked out. Hopefully not. But if you get sucked out, you lose a life, and uh, that's not usually a good thing. But the good thing is that you can also do that to the enemies. You can knock the enemies towards the door, and when it opens, like that, they get knocked out, or they they fall out, they get sucked out. Oh no. <clears throat> it's not super effective for these guys, because these guys die pretty easily anyway, but the next guy... Oh, I thought I had him. This guy, if you can get him knocked over there, hugely beneficial. The problem is... <clears throat> he can throw you over his shoulder. So, uh... If you're attacking him from the front and he grabs you, he throws you backwards. So... 
if you're trying to knock him towards the door, a lot of times he'll actually throw you to the door and you die. Luckily that didn't happen, so uh... Onward to mission four, undersea base. The chopper is landing on a mysterious island. Now what's really cool about this level is the music. I've always liked the music to this level and I'm not really sure why. We're on this. We're on an island, and they made this this base on this island. I don't know. It's just kind of weird to me. And I don't know why they labeled their fences with the word "out." It doesn't make any. It doesn't make sense to me either. And apparently, we're doing this at sunset. Okay. Okay. So before we continue, we are about to see the basement of this building which has a very odd structural component. Somebody installed spikes on an incredibly low ceiling, so jumping is not an option. We get to see us go through the, go down via the windows there. See, so yeah, you don't want to jump, because uh, that happens. And honestly, I don't even know if uh, knocking these guys with the uppercut into the ceiling if it does any more damage. Ow, that hurt. Ow, that hurt twice. Stop! That was very uncomfortable. Oh, I got him with a knee. A knee attack. Okay, and they ripped this section right out of Contra. Ooh. That thing almost took out my hair. My awesome hair. And the uh, enemies just sort of fall out of the ceiling. Oh, I missed. Oh, these guys have knives. I'd rather not get knifed. Oh, but I'll do some knifing. Stop, stop. Come on, guy. You know you want to die. That's kind of a weird thing to say to somebody, right? <laughs> oh, my eyes are dry. Okay, so this next room is really weird. And if you've never played this before, it's instant death. Because you walk through this door and you think, okay, I'm good. But you walk right onto this platform that just whoop, writes you off the off the side of this ledge to your death. So what you have to do is walk down immediately. And walk down. Because if you don't, you just go bloop, right off the side. And then uh, much frustration and profanity follows. So onward to the next section. Where does this path lead us? I don't know, but we should probably go down it. We've got no choice but to go on through this. What? No. Though this is the way to certain death. Like, we're definitely going to die if we go this way. There's just no way we're not going to die. Certain death. Eh. Let's do it anyway. Sounds like a plan. This is a very convincing danger sign. And right off the ledge. Okay, so if you don't know what to do here, the first implication, or the implication, the first inclination that I had as a young gamer was to just jump off to the right side like I just did. I mean, that makes total sense, right? You don't want to do that. You got this ladder here, and that's where you want to go. Because that's a pretty far fall. <clears throat> You know what? I think... I forgot about this elbow move. I just remember that. So you can... You hit the person, hit the enemy a couple of times, get them to sort of get stunned, and then you go over and you grab them and you push down in the direction that you're... the directional button that you're facing, and he does a... elbow attack. Kind of neat. Okay, so I mentioned bad platforming earlier. <clears throat> this is really the, the first of the... of the bad platforming. Because, uh... 
You gotta get it just right. Can't believe I missed that. Not too far? Oh, I almost went too far. I was so close. But I made it. But I unnecessarily lost one of my lives. And that's the problem with the platforming in this game. It's, I mean, it's just unnecessarily difficult. But, you know, I think I mentioned this in a couple of other videos, that NES games had to be difficult because if you brought the game home and you beat it easily, you felt like you were cheated. Which honestly reminds me of a story uh, relating to Double Dragon 2 specifically. When I was much younger and this was still a very new game, I went to Toys R Us and uh, had a bunch of money in my pocket and was going to buy Double Dragon 2. But instead, uh-oh, uh-oh. Don't kill me, Mr. Guy. I went to Toys R Us, had a had a had a bunch of bunch of money, and I was gonna buy Double Dragon Two. However, I didn't have enough, and uh, but I had that money in my pocket. It was kind of burning a hole in my pocket, and I said, you know what? I'm going home with the game today. So I went and I picked out a game that was in my price range. The name of that game was Metal Storm, which I, I think I'd played once before. And was like, this is a kind of a neat game. I'll, I'll buy this. So I bought this game, Metal Storm, and uh, I took it home. And over the course of about two, maybe three days, I beat it. I finished the game, and I was mad. I was mad that it was so easy. I was like, this game is stupid. It's, it was so easy. I'm gonna take it back. And I bought it at Toys R Us. So I took the game back to Toys R Us, and uh, had it, in, had it in the box. Took it to the lady at the desk. I explained to her my grievance, and she said, "Well, that's just tough because you opened it. The game is yours now." And I was so sad because at that point I had the extra money to be able to buy Double Dragon 2. So I took Metal Storm back home with me and resented that game, like legitimately resented Metal Storm for many, many years until recently when I went on eBay and discovered how much that game was worth. Um, go check it out. If you don't know, it's something of a shocker. <clears throat> Especially considering it was like like a bargain bin sort of sale when I bought it. Um, I think it's about $200 at present, like present value. Whereas Double Dragon 2 is like, like I bought this copy for... Uh, actually, this is... I'm, I'm playing this on the... Uh, NES Classic Edition, but my actual copy of Double Dragon 2, which I will show you in a second, I bought for, uh... 15 bucks. Bought this guy for $15 the other day. So, <clears throat> even though Metal Storm wasn't my choice of game at the time, uh, financially, many years later, it was the more prudent choice. Of course, I didn't know that at the time. Nobody could have known that. But to be fair, the Metal Storm is a fantastic game. It's a lot of fun. <clears throat> I just really want a Double Dragon 2. Okay, so this, this level is stupid. You see what I'm dealing with, right? It's the platforms that disappear. And this is actually not the hard part. This is this part's pretty easy. You don't have to deal with that many platforms. And I think I might have just messed up. Oh my goodness, I'm dead. No, I'm good. Okay. Give me, give me just a second. Gotta breathe. Okay. Calm down. And I always thought the eyes and the wall behind me were a little creepy. <clears throat> but other than the platforming, this level is actually pretty easy. Because you just sort of do your spin kick and the bad guys just sort of run into it. I don't think any any kind of variation of this level is even in the second game in the arcade. Uh, I think this was one of those levels they added for the NES. Okay, so... Yeah, this is the dumb platforming part. Okay, that door up there, you see the door. That's the end of the level. It's a short level. But, uh... This part... When I think I'm going to play this game, when I'm like, you know what, I'm going to play some Double Dragon 2... I remember this level and I usually don't. 
Okay. Alright, so far so good. So far so good. Okay, just one more platform and done. Oh, first try. Check that out. I'm feeling very accomplished now. Billy, from here on, it's too dangerous. Who said that? I think I heard Ma Marion's voice. That's impossible! Or is it? Trap room. Okay, this is another level with some pretty dumb platforming. I mean, look at this. Now, I think you can jump from this, uh, the first conveyor belt platform down to the second one. I think that's what I'm gonna try to do. I mean, not down to the second one, down to the, the far one. And you see how well that worked out for me. I think I jumped too soon. Ah, made it! Look at that! Okay, I'm still running sort of low on life. Oh, don't kill me. And what's bad about this is, uh... This game doesn't... The continues in this game are done a little bit weird. So the game does have continues. But, uh... They are, uh... Cheat codes that you put in at the... Game over screen. And there are three different cheat codes based on what level you're on. And, uh... I think the level that I'm on now requires a second controller. Which, unfortunately, I don't have. I mean, I guess I could just unplug my controller and plug it into the second player slot. But you know what? I'm not going to do that. I don't remember this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Whoever thought of this was just... This is just a dumb level. Really dumb. Oh, man, I thought I was done. I thought I just killed myself. <sighs> I don't know why my nose is so itchy tonight. But here we go, here we go. No! No, 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 no. No, no, no. Oh, don't don't turn, don't turn, don't turn. Oh, oh, oh. That was... I really almost died. <clears throat> I gotta watch out for the, sp the, the spikes. Okay, okay, okay. No, I overjumped. Yeah, this level is just dumb. Seriously? <laughs> no! Frustration is starting to set in. Apparently I need to jump before it stops turning. Like that! No! Billy, what are you doing? What are you doing to me? Okay, let's try this again. I'm gonna make this. <sighs> so this is Double Dragon 2. Awful platforming. Just, 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 just awful. Oh no, no! Okay. Boy, I sure am glad I didn't play it on the harder difficulty level. This is my last guy, too. If I could just get past this wheel onto that other platform over there, I'd be alright. Okay, okay, there. Ah. Finally. But I'm still down to one life, which is very unfortunate because I really kind of needed that, that other life. <clears throat> Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe I'm still good. Maybe I'm still good. But I'm pretty sure the rest of this level is pretty easy. I think that door is actually the end of the level. I hope. No, this is the end of the level. And it's just fighting from here on out. Yeah, it's just more of the same at this point. Um, 
I'm pretty sure the boss is another one of those guys that is wearing the green pants and not wearing a shirt. And elbow to the neck. Now, I do kind of wish that when you threw enemies, you could throw them into each other, but... Not in this game. So we're going to fight through the rest of this level, and, uh... The next level after this level is actually the final level for this difficulty level. If we were playing it on a different, on the uh, harder difficulty level, that'd still be one level after this. But that one, like the last level, is just the last boss, like the final, final, final boss. I don't remember there being this many enemies on this part. I'm honestly having an easier time playing this than I thought I was going to have. It's, uh, and I say that as I'm running low on health and I still have to defeat the boss. There he is. Oh, that took off a bunch of health. I like I, yeah, if I can get him knocked down, I'm good. Because then I can just do this spin kick, hopefully uppercut, or just punch him. Yeah, that was pretty easy. Okay. Final level. Hopefully I can do it with one life. Okay, goons. Where's your slime ball boss hiding? Ha ha ha. You'll never defeat our boss. You'll only destroy yourselves. Mission 8. The Double Illusion. <clears throat> and by double illusion and fighting yourself, they just mean... The final boss, which is the final boss in the arcade, is a shadow version of yourself that is able to throw hadoukens, is able to teleport to inside your body and hit you from within. Uh, kind of not fair, but he's still not that hard. Not anywhere near as hard as the same fight is in the arcade, which is kind of ridiculous. I actually was uh, went to a local gaming bar the other night, and they have a they have a machine set up. And uh, I played with a guy. We played through Double Dragon 2. And we were fine until we got to the, the final fight with the uh, the shadow characters. And it took a lot of uh, pressing that in insert quarter button. It was a main machine. Uh, so it wasn't like a real arcade machine. But uh, yeah, we would have spent probably $20 if we'd actually beaten it legitimately with actual quarters. And I think... Ah, uh, it's these guys again. I think this is the hardest guy in the game. Yeah, I'm not timing my spin kick well at all. Ouch. And another one. Okay, let's see if I can get this... The spin kick right. No, he's just gonna duck anyway, so... All right, I think this is it. I think this is the final. No, we have a... <clears throat> oh, it's these guys with the, um, like, the ninjas. If I can see the spin kick, that's an easy way to beat them. I think two more. Oh, I missed the spin kick. Oh, no, I'm in trouble. I'm in serious trouble. Oh, I may not get past these guys. I am, my palms are sweaty now. My palms are legitimately sweaty. Oh no. Okay. Almost. Okay, one of them. One of them's gone. And the other one. Okay. This is the last boss fight. This is actually pretty easy, unless I get the timing wrong. Just like that. Okay. See, pretty easy with the spin kick uppercut combo. 
Yeah, and that's that. And we're not gonna be able to read the text. Read it really quick or pause the video right as it pops up because it's just like, well done, Double Dragons, very few. Yeah, you can't read it. You just can't read it. Oh man, I can't believe I actually finished it. Uh, sort of finished it. Finished it on Warrior difficulty level. Didn't finish it on Supreme Master, but uh, anyway, that's Double Dragon 2. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, my name is Kevin Godfrey, and uh, if you liked this video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down, and uh, yeah. I think that's all I have to say for right now. Anyway, this is Double Dragon 2. Until next time, hope you have a good one. See you later.